Hello, welcome to my channel. If you've not watched one of my videos before, my name is Kat. I run a baking blog called The Baking Explorer. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, then please click the subscribe button and then you'll be able to see whenever I release a new video. Today's video is all about drip cakes. Now, I've written a thorough drip cake how-to guide over on my blog. Uh, I've put the link to that in the description box. What I'm going to be showing you in this video today is the foundations of a drip cake. So how to build up the layers, how to cover it with buttercream, how to make that nice and smooth. Then I'm going to show you how to make the, the ganache for the drip itself. And then I'm also going to cover, as you can see here, coloured drips and gold drips. If you've got any questions about how to make drip cakes, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to head over to my blog for all of my recipes, including the recipes for these two amazing cakes. So I'm going to start with the foundation of a drip cake um, and how you build that up, how you make it level and how you give yourself, well, a great foundation for a drip cake. So I've made three sponges. These are vanilla ones, but obviously you can make any one you like. Uh, and the problem that I have to start with is, as you can see, this cake is not perfectly flat on top. Uh, it has a dome on top. So the first thing that you need to do is level that off. So there's two tools that you can use to do that with. The first one is a good old sharp knife. Um, and the second is this thing, which is called a cake leveler. I'm not the biggest fan of these and mine is actually broken. Uh, so I'm not going to use this. Um, so it's really up to you which one you want to use. Um, I'm going to go with the big old sharp knife option. Um, so first thing you need to do is just gently put your hand on top of the cake. Now obviously watch your fingers, do this slowly. Um, please don't cut yourselves. Um, and then you want to hold the knife at the point that you want to cut the cake and just start gently sawing it through. Now I like to use a knife that you can see from both sides because then you know that you're keeping even and you can kind of twist it around. So you're sort of just doing the edges first in a way. And then just twist. Just use your hand on top to move the cake around. Let's so just keep cutting. And eventually you'll reach the point where you started and then you can push that through the middle. So gently put the knife to the side you can lift off the top and then you've got a relatively flat surface to work with okay so all of my cakes are leveled off now i've moved one of the sponges onto a cake board and then i put that cake board on top of a decorating turntable which spins around and um, cake board is optional and um, it does make the cake obviously easier to remove and you don't have to worry about messing up the buttercream finish. I don't always use them if I'm just serving the cake to family and friends. Um, what I tend to do instead is just pop it on a plate. The leftover cake cuttings, obviously you could just eat them, you know, just have a little snack. Uh, there's also a recipe on my blog for uh, three ingredient leftover cake truffles. Uh, which involves cake, cream cheese, and chocolate. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's gonna be tasty. I popped some vanilla buttercream into a piping bag with a round nozzle. Uh, you don't have to pipe the buttercream between the layers. It's really up to you. You can just use uh, a palette knife and scoop out the bowl and just spread it on. To add as well, you will need an angled palette knife like this. Uh, to make a drip cake it's an essential piece of kit um, so it's really important to grab one of those before you get started you can start from the middle you can start from the edge but essentially you just need to pipe a nice swirl of buttercream into the middle of the cake and you can use the turntable to help you pipe i'm just starting in the middle just going around like this i might use the turntable now at this point to just help me Oh, lost a bit of pressure. Just 
carrying that round around. Oh, and it's finished. There we go, lovely. Grab your palette knife and just smooth that out and use the turntable to help you do that. That is essentially what you want to achieve between each layer. So we'll add the next layer, pop that on top. Now I like to make sure, just by putting my fingers like this, to just feel if I put it in the centre. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to do the next layer of buttercream and add the final cake on top. So we'll skip forward. So that second layer of buttercream is all done. So now I'm going to add the final layer of sponge. What I like to do is flip it upside down because even though you have cut off the doming on the cake, um, the bottom of the cake is super flat. Um, so it's just that extra assurance that the top of the cake is going to be really nice and flat. So just press that on and again, I just like to use my fingers, just hold them like this and just feel if they feel straight, twist around. It feels pretty straight to me, but I'm just going to give it a sideways glance just to make sure. Yeah, it looks pretty straight to me and it's nice and level. So now we can move on to the next stage. The next stage is to give the cake a crumb coat. Now the purpose of a crumb coat is to essentially seal in the crumbs so that when you put on your final layer of buttercream there's no pesky bits of crumbs mixed in with it. Um, so this is like a sealant layer. So I have got a bowl with some buttercream in. When you're doing the crumb coat, separate the buttercream that you're going to use for it into another bowl because as you're scooping buttercream out of this bowl and putting it onto the cake you will get some crumbs into this and you don't want that to mix with your main batch of buttercream because you want to keep that completely crumb free um, for the final layer on the outside of the cake. Uh, so just pop a bit in here and if you need a bit more you can just add a, add a bit more in. Got my trusty angled palette knife or angled spatula um, and I'm just literally going to scoop up bits of cake I'll try and do this at the front so you can see bits of cake. I'm going to scoop up bits of buttercream uh, and put them on the side of the cake like this. And I'm just going to pull it round like that. Let's pull it round. And then just use the top of the cake to just scrape off any excess. Okay, so the cake has now got a lovely crumb coat. We've sealed in all those crumbs. Now you need to pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes just to firm up the crumb coat. So the cake has had a nice chill in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And now I'm gonna put on the final layer of buttercream. So to do that, you're gonna need, once again, the angled palette knife, <coughs> an icing scraper or icing smoother and um, you want it to be taller than the size of your cake. Uh, this is a great one, this is from Wilton, which I've been using for years. Uh, you're gonna want an empty bowl, and then I have put the buttercream in a piping bag uh, fitted with a Wilton 798 nozzle. You don't have to use uh, this nozzle or, or a piping bag to put the buttercream on the cake. You can just, you know, smooth it on with a palette knife. Uh, but I like to use it just because it just makes things easier and um, it creates a nice even finish. This is the way that I do things and um, there are other ways of doing it um, that produce similar or the same effects but uh, this is how I like to do it and so that's what I'm showing you. <laughs> so what you want to do, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you this, I'll move to the side. So you want to hold it against here. Squeeze the buttercream out 
and pull it around and then you can stop like that if you want to stop and do another section just carry on doing that all the way around just hold and pull So I usually like to go around the cake with the palette knife first, just to ensure the buttercream's sticking nicely to the cake. And then I'll go around with the smoother scraper tool in a moment. So when you start to get a, a build up of buttercream on your tool, just scrape it off into the bowl. So now I'm going to start using the scraper. You want to hold it against the side of your cake, make sure it's nice and even, push it into the buttercream and start turning. And then you can stop and you can scrape off any excess and back into the bowl and then you can carry on. And you just want to keep doing this until you've got a smooth finish all the way around and until you're happy really with how it looks. If at any point you notice a section where more buttercream needs to be added, for example just here there's a little hole, just add a bit on with a palette knife, like, like so, and then you can smooth over that, over that again with your scraper tool. What you want to do on the top is make sure your palette knife is nice and nice and clean and then just gently bring in those little bits that stick up and then scrape it off each time you do it. Just pull it in and then scrape and then pull in and then scrape. So just carry on doing that until you're happy. Okay, so now the cake has a lovely smooth coating of buttercream. Uh, so I'm going to pop that in the fridge and then we can move on to the best part, which is adding all the drips and decorations. Now we have reached the main event, uh, which is making the drip for the drip cake. Now, as you'll notice, this is not the vanilla cake that I was just decorating for you. This is one I made earlier. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. And um, it's a chocolate cake. So it's essentially just the same as the other cake and exactly the same thing, except it's a chocolate cake inside and it's chocolate buttercream. Uh, so what I'm going to start with is a dark chocolate ganache and I'm going to show you how to make the ganache and then how to drip it onto the cake. So I've got some dark chocolate here um, in my bowl and then I'm going to add some double cream. Now you want to use the same amount of dark chocolate as double cream. Now I'm going to pop it in the microwave. You really want to heat this up slowly. So I'm going to start with like a 20 to 30 second blast and then I'm going to give it a stir and then do 10 second blasts stirring in between each one until I've got a nice smooth ganache. Okay, so this has been heated up and I've now got a gorgeous, silky smooth, dark chocolate ganache. Now, melting chocolate and cream together is the most common type of ganache that people use for drip cakes and um, but there is a cheats method where you just melt the dark chocolate and then you add a little bit of oil and um, i use vegetable oil so it's up to you which one you use but they're both the same principles you know i melt the chocolate in the microwave either with cream or i add a bit of oil after it's melted okay so now i'm going to pop this lovely ganache into a piping bag um, in order to pipe the drip onto the cake. 
There are a few other ways that you can add the ganache. Some people like to use a spoon to just sort of gently drizzle it down. Um, or you can use one of these, a squeezy bottle, and fill it with the ganache and then just use it around the edge to squeeze off blobs. Um, these are probably more better for the environment because obviously you can reuse them, whereas with the piping bag it's a one use situation. Um, so I think this is something that I will be moving on to very soon. I just bought these recently, I've not had a chance to try them out yet. Um, so I'm going to use a piping bag now just because I know what I'm doing with that, I'm more practiced with it. Um, but I will be moving on to the squeezy bottle very soon. I've popped the ganache into a piping bag and I've just snipped off the end. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to do the drip. So, you just want to pipe out a small amount and just let it drizzle down the edge. And then do a bit more, a bit more. And you just release different amounts with the piping bag. We're just going to stop there. How far these drips are going to give us an idea if I need to squeeze more out or not. I think they have some pretty nice drips. I like the lengths of them. We've got some shorter ones and some longer ones. That was so easy. Just a little bit of a squeeze from a piping bag. Slowly move along, do another squeeze and continue and go all the way around. And then you've got these lovely, gorgeous looking, tempting looking uh, drips on your cake. Now it's entirely up to you whether you want to cover the whole centre of the cake with ganache or not. Um, I like doing it, I think it looks really pretty and it tastes nice. And if you're adding any sprinkles to the middle of the cake, it helps them to stick. So all you want to do for this part is just drizzle on your ganache. Just show you on half of the cake. Drizzle on your ganache and use a you can use an angled palette knife or this is the flat one and just smooth it all out until you get a nice even finish. So all the drips on this cake are now finished. It's covered in a lovely chocolate ganache all over the top. So all we need to do to finish it is to add some uh, lovely buttercream swirls and a few sprinkles. This is a 1E nozzle. So the swirls are all done. Uh, now I'm just going to add a few sprinkles just to make it look extra pretty. There you go. That is how to decorate a drip cake with a dark chocolate ganache. Now we're going to add a white chocolate drip to the vanilla cake that I was stacking at the start of the video. So to make a white chocolate ganache, the principles are fairly similar. You just need a little less cream and a little more chocolate. Because there's more milk in white chocolate, it can be a lot more runny. Um, so it works out as about two parts white chocolate to one part cream. But um, I'll put an exact recipe. Um, either in the description box or there'll be a link to a recipe in the description box, so check there. Um, now I know white chocolate isn't technically white, it's this kind of yellowish colour. You can add super white powder, which is this stuff um, by the brand Sugar Flare, um, to make it less yellowy. But the great thing about white chocolate ganache is that you can colour it, so it's really versatile. And I'm going to colour some of this and decorate the cake with it. And the colour I'm going for is pink. So now I'm going to add some of the ooh, pink food colouring. Now you want to use either a gel food colouring. These are my favourite ones. They are the brand Pro Gel. Um, or you want to use a powder. They're a little bit harder to get hold of in my experience. Um, but they're excellent for colouring chocolate. So I've just added a little drop. Oh wow, look at this. That is pink. The pink white chocolate ganache is now in a piping bag and I'm going to add that to the cake just by drizzling a bit over the edge. See how far that goes. 
Add a bit more. But don't they look nice? So that is how you do a coloured drip. Just a bit of white chocolate ganache and some food colour in. And yeah, the world is your oyster really, as far as colours go. So now I'm going to add the white chocolate ganache to the rest of the vanilla cake. Now you need to pop it in the fridge for a bit, just so those drips can harden. You definitely don't want to start painting them gold while they're still wet. Now that we've added the white chocolate ganache and it's had some time to firm up in the fridge, um, I'm going to use this metallic paint, which is fully edible, to paint the white chocolate gold. If you can't get hold of paint, then you can also use luster dust, which you then mix with a little alcohol, such as vodka. Um, you can also use lemon juice if you don't want to add alcohol. Um, and you can it, that makes the paint when you mix it together. What you also need for the gold drip is some paint brushes. These are special cake decorating ones. To make sure whatever brush you use is clean and that you've not used it before with anything that is, wouldn't be safe to eat. You don't just have to use gold paint. You could do rose gold or silver. Now I'm gonna add some of the paint to one of the drips. This is a bit of a long process, but it is worth it. Right, the gold drip is finished. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna finish off the cake by adding some buttercream. So that is the end of the drip cake video. Uh, as I said at the beginning, head over to my blog and read the full blog post that I've written, which is called the ultimate drip cake how-to guide and that'll provide all the recipes and all the information that we've covered here today. And please do subscribe to my channel so you can see more of my future videos. I am planning on doing more tutorial and how-to guides. And if you like this video, please click the like button. And if you've got any questions or if you've just got something nice to say, then pop it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope to see you again. Now, I think I'm gonna go slice of cake.